If you wanna be crypto savvy, we can help you skip those valleys. Let's rally, yeah. If you wanna be crypto savvy, we can Welcome let back to Be Crypto Savvy. savvy. Hope everybody's it. having an outstanding Friday. That's right, we made it. It's Friday, everybody. Weekend is upon us. Today we are going to be jumping into the price predicting range report provided by our partners over at genie.io. Uh, first, before we do that, however, as usual, we'll start over in TradingView, looking at Bitcoin here first on the daily time frame. I'll keep this pretty brief today with it being Friday. You know, we're left with only retail left in the market going into the weekend. You know, so I don't see a lot, a lot actually happening, a little bit of a cool off. It'll be interesting to see if we can hold, you know, $30,000 as support. Personally, I don't think we'll be able to do so. Uh, you know, and we're still within this resistance zone, so it wouldn't be out of the uh, equation to drop back down even outside of the resistance zone, kind of where we were trading at back in this area. Uh, and you can see that over here on our volume indicator, that really supports that thesis as well. So I think it'll be a relatively quiet weekend as far as Bitcoin is concerned. I think we'll just kind of do a little bit choppy sideways action. Um, just kind of building up our strength. If we look down at our volume ever since we got that initial pop a few days ago, that the volume's been declining each day thereafter. And if you look down below that on our stochastic, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, sorry about that. On our stochastic relative strength index, you can see we are in the over exhausted area as well as uh, we are seeing a bearish cross on our stochastic uh, on, with between our K line and our D line as well. So indications are showing that this trend is, uh, you know, tiring out. Plus, going into the weekend, you know, losing, uh, you know, or dwindling down to retail investors uh, and volume pulling back. You know, all indications are that we should see a, a slight pullback, if nothing else, at least choppy sideways action but again I don't think that we're gonna hold the 30,000 but you never know there is a lot of uh, there's a lot of speculation and FOMO out there so it will be pretty interesting to see what happens over the weekend as a matter of fact most likely I will be putting out one or two videos throughout the weekend anyhow so let me know down in the comments if, if you think that's something that you would look forward to or not uh, it just seemed to me like there's not a lot of uh, new content produce and release on the weekends especially Sunday so it was just a thought I had uh, let me know in the comments what you think uh, as far as Bitcoin let's uh, wrap this up with that and I did want to take a quick peek at the Bitcoin dominance as we did see that rejection and have been consistently see this pull back while mind you ethereum has been gaining dominance and we've been seeing a lot of green starting to tick up in the altcoin market so if you didn't catch our video uh, when we talked about everything kind of lining up for a mini altcoin season, I'm going to throw that up in the corner so you have a chance to check that out. Uh, I'm not going to spend any more time on that now. Let's jump over to Ethereum. Ethereum sitting here coming out hot. I'm telling you, this one looks like it could move a little bit yet. Uh, more so than, than Bitcoin, in my opinion. Uh, you can see that we're already crossing into our uh, next resistance level at the $2,100 uh, dollar area. And uh, after that, we've, we've got some room uh, before before our next you know, actual resistance. The next main resistance that I'd be looking for after uh, we pass our little area here uh, a little bit higher than $2,100 would be closer to $2,700. So we've got a little bit of a room after we pass here to where I think this could potentially have a bit of a breakout. Uh, so that's something to definitely keep an eye on. Uh, Ethereum is obviously clearly very popular. The, uh, you know, it's the, the leader of the altcoin. So with this new Shanghai upgrade, there's just been a lot of you know, buzz floating around. And with, with us not seeing literally like any pullback, when people were allowed to withdraw all of the staked ETH that they've had, you know, dating back two years ago, and 
nobody was pulling out, you know, that just obviously you can see really pushed that price up. So, you know, I'm not, I don't want to say, I don't want to be a moon boy. I'll tell you that right now. The last thing that I want to do is be the guy screaming that we're going to the moon. However, I do see, you know, we are in, dropping into that uh, over exhausted area and our volume has been dwindling dwindling down uh, just like Bitcoin. You know, it's Friday. So as far as today goes, it'll be interesting. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, why don't we jump over to the genie.io range report? Oh, geez, what am I doing? <laughs> trying to move my page around like I'm on trading view. I got to learn how to switch my mind like uh, like switching these windows. If you are not familiar with what the genie.io range report is, up in the top right corner, I will be throwing up a video that will explain everything that you would need to know as well as how to get this range report for not only a two week free trial, but 10% off thereafter. And that would grandfather you in through November. And keep in mind before November coming up very soon, not only does this report include Bitcoin and Ethereum, but the team over at genie.io is also adding in several more top tier coins into the report as well. So you're, uh, you would be grandfathered in even after they include things like that, as well as more indicators into the report uh, in exchange rating, as well as uh, they are in testing phase right now to have this report update uh, as often as every six hours instead of every 24 hours. So a lot of upgrades coming. Uh, you have a chance to be able to get it for a two week free trial, which is a really great way to follow us here at Be Crypto Savvy and just kind of learn the ins and outs and how to use a report. And this report can pay for itself. I mean, for less than $20, you'll be able to save way more than that on all your entry and exit points by just being more savvy in you know your confirmations with that. So I'll just leave it at that. That report or the, the video is in the top right corner for you if you are interested in checking that out. Let's get moving. In the news and events, I'll just kind of cover some of these, but do remember you can click on any of them and read the full uh, the full conversation in detail uh, if you have the report in your hands. So Bitcoin price spikes above 31,000 as Ethereum gains spark altcoin season calls. Remember that video. Bitcoin's dominance knocked by Ethereum's post Chappella rally. That also goes hand in hand with that video altcoin season. Ether options trading volume surpasses Bitcoin as Shanghai upgrade drives demand for bullishness. Ether's post Shanghai rally knocks Bitcoin dominance from 21 month high. So check out some of these news and events. I do see a lot of you are grabbing this report. So congratulations and make sure that you are staying up to date with all those macro events. Bitcoin ticker shows 30,750 at the time of recording. Looking at the Bitcoin volatility forecast, opportunity zone, and relative value, uh, looks like we would expect our typical uh, weekend slight pullback, possible slight pullback. Could also just be choppy sideways action in here as well, and so you know easily maintain or remain within this zone uh, before seeing uh, a uh, beginning of the week pop and possible pullback later on into the week i'd say depending on where the stochastic and macd are at that point i would say that's a pretty uh pretty reasonable forecast to expect going into this coming week with all the momentum we've had we're not going to spend time on candles or rsi as we were just there on uh trading view the macd we were just kind of looking at as well you see we have seen this bullish cross here so we do uh, show possible price movement to the upside in the future uh, the stochastic is very oversold it's exhausted right now however that doesn't mean it can't spend a little bit of time up here you can look back here as a reference point we spent you know a, a few days up here before uh, really seeing that pullback you can actually see right here on the 20th we actually got a bounce on our uh, K line on our D line that kept us up there. So you might even see something like that here. Uh, 
where we could either see this cross and see more immediate price action to the downside or see a bounce and have that stay up uh, just for a little bit longer before then seeing. At some point, we're going to have to see a pullback of some sort. These following indicators I'm probably not going to spend a lot of time on as they are just kind of uh, neutral and we're just kind of keeping this relatively short for this video. Average uh, price indicator is showing just higher highs, higher lows. Bitcoin on balance volume is still stacking higher and higher. Average movement index has gone up a little bit to 35. So this is our trend reading. Anything above a 25 is reading some sort of trend. The ultimate oscillator after trading sideways uh, for the past week and a half or so in the 50s moved up to the 60s and it is now trading sideways. Parabolic stop and reversal has now printed our ninth straight buy dot underneath our candles. We have gotten, count again, nine straight confirmation buy dots. Uh, Fibonacci retracement we're not hanging out on today as well as Hikaki and the Kopak curve is still just kind of hugging that zero line. So the historical, sitting at just shy of 92% accuracy for this report so far over the past seven days. And now we're going to go ahead and jump into the Ethereum side of things. You can see that we are really just looking very neutral over the next seven days. Uh, doesn't, look like, doesn't look like a lot of action really at all, which would make sense with with the stochastic, if I remember right, I do re do think the stochastic is pretty over over exhausted. So let's keep moving on. Uh, candles, we are not spending time on. Yes, the hourly RSI is very very exhausted. Uh, with this being Friday, I I'm not gonna say that this is gonna come down today necessarily, uh, and we definitely have some room to the upside yet on our. Uh, daily RSI over 30 days. So as we are definitely uh, exhausted, there is still a little bit of room to the upside today, I believe, before going into the weekend and cooling off. And uh, as far as report, it looks like it's expecting kind of a stagnant uh, recovery week, perhaps, which would be able to bring our stochastic uh, RSI back into or just or just your RSI in general back into more of a position of strength uh, looking at the MACD the K is bouncing off the D if you're trying to give us a little extra time to uh, to hover on the upside of things the stochastic is uh, is right around in that exhausted area uh, we do have a little bit of room to the upside, and we still have not seen a bearish cross either. Uh, the average price, let's get rid of the candles here, and you can see higher highs, higher lows. On balance volume, same thing. So just be careful of a dump at some point. Average directional movement index, very low, sitting at 28, but anything above that 25 line is reading the start of a trend. So there is possibly something there and you can see we are moving in that upward direction same thing with ultimate oscillator we've gone from 50 to 64 over the last couple of days moving on up parabolic SAR stop and reversal has printed four straight buy dots underneath our candles anything more than three dots in a row is what I personally look for for a good confirmation on your parabolic SAR we're not going to spend time on the retracement today and the Hikaki, we've gotten our last two strong confirmations were both bull signals. And the Kopak curve had gotten the bounce off uh, back on April 1st. And we've just been putting in higher highs and higher lows since. Uh, with, with this coming down and not crossing and getting a bounce, I don't anticipate this coming all the way back up. I would see this more of a mid-level type, uh, type of rise at the most. And that's just a that's just a me thing, uh, but just something to point out there. Over on the historical, sliding in at just under 92% over the past seven days on Ethereum as well as Bitcoin. So with that, I think we're just going to cut the video for the day. Uh, I hope everybody has a stellar Friday and keep an eye out for at least one or two videos. Uh, most likely it'll be two. I'll probably just end up breaking up 
uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum into two different uh, re uh, two different videos diving into the range report at, at some point through the weekend. So keep an eye out for that. If you got anything of value from this video, don't forget to hit that like button. That helps us out tremendously. And we will catch you folks on the next video. See ya!